congratulations on your victory, a, a big win in a main event in your new division. Uh, give an idea of kind of how you're feeling after that performance. I feel good. I mean, I'm always a little bit hard on myself because I want to get the finish. But I got to remind myself that I just took out the number one contender in the flyweight division. <laughs> so um, I guess I should feel great. But <laughs> I want that finish next time. I understand I had a really short camp. So, but we're going to get it done next time. Kind of a slow start coming out. I was curious if that was, you know, by design or if it was just, you know, getting used to it. What, what, what happened in the opening round? Um, it was just, it's been a weird time, and it felt, this whole camp felt really weird for me. I mean, when I first started, uh, I accepted this fight, I was literally in the gym for one week, and the next day I had a fight lined up, so um, it was just really weird, and especially because it was a fifth round fight, and so it took me a little while to just really get warmed up there, um, really get my feet going. I felt like I was a little slow. I was kind of going her pace, and then I was like, man, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, like, I need to, yeah, I moved up to flyweight, but I, I need to move my feet like I was a strawweight. I know I'm quick on my feet, so I needed to get my feet going a little bit more. So, um, yeah, the first round was, was a little bit slow, I, I, but I also knew that I'd get stronger as the rounds go. You, you were saying all the right things coming in, but, I mean, was there doubt? Was there concern? Like, am I not going to be ready for this? I mean, it always is because this was my first, like, five-round fight, you know. And then on top of that, um, I knew she was going to be huge, you know. She had missed weight. And to be honest, she didn't miss weight by 0.2. She actually missed weight by a lot more, but she held on to the towel when she got on the scale. And... Um, I know this because we received the text message from her manager, I mean her coach, letting us know she was going to miss weight by three and a half pounds, not point two. But when she showed up, she held the towel and got away with that. That's why she was so proud after she weighed in and she was so happy that she's like, I only missed weight by two points out. No. So she went into this fight a lot heavier than I did. So not only did I move up a weight class, I got somebody that was a bantam weight, like going in there, not flying in his flyweight. What did you think? I mean, obviously, you were, the frustration is coming out. I mean, was there any possibility of saying, we don't want to fight you or, or, or demand more money or whatever it may be? Absolutely not. I mean, I'm a fighter. I mean, I've missed weight before, too, and everybody accepted the fight. I've fought people who miss weight, too, but it's all about how you carry yourself, too, outside when you miss weight. When I miss weight, I locked myself in the hotel, and I freaking cried for hours. I wasn't running around fucking smiling. Sorry, excuse my language. But I wasn't, like, smiling and blah, blah, blah. So it was definitely a different demeanor, but I knew that I needed to, like, put that behind me. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, I like Jessica and stuff like that, but just just the way that that all that a whole deal with the weight happened like it wasn't cool but i knew that i was gonna you know it's my job so i was gonna show up last thing for me you, you said you beat the top contender another top contender caitlin chukagan has already taken to twitter and say hey she'd like to fight with you so i'm curious if that's a matchup that you think makes sense or or what you see next for yourself yeah absolutely man i'm just trying to stay busy so uh whatever fight whoever you know, um, I got to go get a get an MRI done. Um, just make sure I'm, I'm good to go. But as soon as I'm cleared, you know, we're ready to line the next one up. Cynthia, right here. Uh, between rounds, Jessica seemed pretty confident she was winning. Uh, so um, between rounds, were you confident you were winning? Um, I know I was, like, winning the fights, but you never know what the judges. Um, I know that her and, her and her team are trying to sell it to the judges in between rounds. But, I mean... You're not gonna fool anyone. I think they're, they're it's just like, it just sucks because it's, you must have the wrong people around you. They should tell you, like, if you're not winning the fight, they should tell you you're not so you can push harder, you know? Um, it, it, they should not be giving her that false confidence. You know, she, she, I feel like she did a lot of wrong things and I don't think she deserved to, to you know, I didn't think she would have deserved to, to be the winner tonight. Um, I already knew what her, her coaches were yell, yelling in between rounds because even some of the combinations I, I used to, like, I, I actually know some of them. So um, they were just trying to put in a show for the judges. I'm glad that they, they seen through the bullshit. Sorry, excuse my language again. <laughs> you, you said you wanted to stay active. Uh, the UFC just announced Fight Island, and that seems to be their plans for moving forward for a little bit. So if you want to keep fighting, you probably have to go to Abu Dhabi, is that something you'd be open to? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready to fight all over the world. It's like freaking Mortal Kombat, you know? Just go everywhere. <laughs> Street fighter. <laughs> Cynthia, there's three pizza places within one mile. <laughs> Have you thought about where you're going to get that pepperoni, pineapple, and jalapeno oh, to celebrate? Man, dude, um, 
I really, you know, that was the plan, but then I got invited to eat some tacos, so we're going to eat at Mas Por Favor tacos tonight with some tequila, so um, we're eating tacos tonight and pizza tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, everyone talked about, you know, like moving up and all that, like now on the other side of it, did you feel as strong as you wanted to? Did you feel like you handled everything for your move up to flyweight pretty well? Yeah, absolutely. Considering everything that was going on, I mean, I think that this is a division that I belong. Um, I'm going to be able to, you know, pick up my strength a little bit more. I, dude, I barely got to train for this and even got prepared. I was in the middle of training, of switching gyms when this pandemic hit. And um, I'm extremely proud that, you know, the, the fighter in me was able to pull this out because this is not even the best me that you guys have seen. Like, that's yet to come. Uh, you talked about, you know, if you, when you're in the empty arena, you want to be able to hear everything, the other corner and all that. Were you able to do that? I was. Um, I knew what combinations they were asking for. I knew exactly what they, what they were doing, except for, like, they were like, do Kevin Lee. I don't know what combination that was. But when she was yelling, like, one body, two body, that's all bang Muay Thai stuff. And I think, you know, Eric, coach, her coach, like, obviously practices all those moves. I trained under Dwayne Ludwig for a long time when he was at Team Alpha Male. So I knew those moves she's throwing. Those are a lot of combinations that I actually throw. So he was... He was saying those combinations, and I think I was throwing the combinations. She wasn't. <laughs> so. <laughs> Final question: With the stuff going on at Flyweight, a lot of people feel like it is wide open after JoJo Calderwood. Being that this is your division, and there's a champion like Valentina who's been so dominant, making noise as the contender. How do you feel like when that's your that's the target at the end of it? I mean, I feel great. It's it's exciting to have such a, a great champion, you know. At first, I wanted to stick around at the strawweight division because it was so competitive. And I was like, man, I want to be the champion of, you know, the best women's division in the UFC. And the strawweight division is just so deep, so talented. It takes – it's so much harder to get that title shot at the strawweight division. And so I was stubborn about it. But I knew eventually I would have to move to flyweight. And unfortunately, you know, I've had my mishaps. So I need to come up here. And I think Valentina, she's an amazing champ. I mean – She's probably the only fighter that gave Amanda Nunez a tough fight. And Amanda Nunez is the freaking baddest woman on the planet right now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's motivating. You know, I, I do know that I also need a lot of work to do, but I'm down to fight whenever, you know, whoever, you know, whether it be a title fight or, or not. But, um, you know, it motivates me. It motivates me a lot that, that we have such a dominant champion right now as Valentina. Cynthia, after Jessica missed weight, she went on Instagram and said that she was proud of missing like this 0.25. But when you see that and you realize it wasn't 0.25, it was actually like three or four pounds. Mm -hmm. How, what do you make of her saying she's proud of that, even though she's lying about the number? Yeah, I mean, you know, it would have been, you know, it's not the first time a fighter has like done that and like, you know, hold on to a towel or like try to take pounds off from the scale and stuff. But it, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, go ahead, you know, go about it, just suck it up and be quiet and then show up the next day. But the simple fact that she was like, right after she went in, she was so happy and she came up to me, even though I know it was bullshit, I just said, yeah, yeah, fine. She came up, she's like, oh, it was only two pound, point two, girl, only two point. But I knew, because she came up to, but I knew she had missed by more. But she was like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Because I knew that I was gonna go and show her up the next day, you know? Um, but then she goes online, you know, and then she's like, oh, you know, guys, I only missed by two point two. I should have peed and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Man, if it was that easy, then maybe you would have peed. Maybe you would have cut your hair to, like, really, if it was only point two. It was just bullshit, and, and it wasn't cool, like, just how she carried it. You know, I'm, I'm cool with Jessica, but just the way she handled the whole weight cut was not cool. If you got told in advance she's going to miss weight, and then she got on the scales, did the towel trick, and then actually made weight, she's taken money out of your pocket, would you have said something? Absolutely. 100%, because we have the texts from her coach messaging my manager saying she was 129 Point six, 30 minutes before she weighed in, she magically took three pounds off? I don't think so. It's not going to fly. Cynthia, I just wanted to ask about the journey. You seemed a little emotional there in the beginning. And so the journey for you going back home to San Jose from the, the Alpha Male um, and then to Sacramento and then all the different camps that you've moved along with, how has like AKA really helped you and how is it been the journey being back home to San Jose? Honestly, it's, it's been crazy. I mean, I, I'd be lying to say if I didn't, if it wasn't, I wasn't worried or, or nervous coming into a fight without like going in with a new team and not being able to really 
you know, get a, get comfortable with everyone. Everything was a little bit off, like everything. Like I had to switch striking coaches a couple times because we had no gym, like it, everything got shut down. Like in reality, I literally probably had my one main coach, which is Ron Kessler, and he's been doing everything in his power to make sure that I was prepared for his fight, you know. I have my other teammates, Aunt Doe, you know, Zach helping me out too, so it's like, it's, I'm extremely grateful to be able to have people that I, many, but that I could rely on, you know, and it felt good to be back home with my family, you know, I got a reminder, I got a reminder of why I'm doing this, you know, and I'm, I'm doing this for my family, I'm doing it for, for all the kids and all the people that grew up in Eastside San Jose, you know, people, you know, against all odds, you know, I'm not supposed to be sitting up here, but we're fucking doing it. <laughs> you said that, and I saw that video where you went back to Overfell, and I know the area pretty well. Um, so when you go back there and, and, you know, I don't know if you got the opportunity to, like, to speak to the, the kids, and I'm just wondering, like, how they may have reacted to you being a UFC fighter and talking, because like you said in the, the video, the neighborhood is not a great neighborhood to grow up in. Yeah, um, unfortunately, because of the pandemic and because the, the everything was closed, I, I haven't got actually the opportunity to go talk to the kids yet, but that's one of my goals. Like, it's always been my dream since I started fighting that one day I was going to win this UFC champion belt, and then I was going to walk into that school and I was going to show all these kids, like, you know, you're not just Eastside San Jose. You can do whatever you want in the world. Like, I, if I can do it, you can do it. So um, that's, that's one of those things. I actually just started working with their organization called uh, Bay Area Beat the Streets, and they help with a lot of like kids you know um help them out with wrestling and being able to provide you know an, an outlet for them you know a place you know where they can feel safe and you know do great things and so i'm, I'm really excited to be on this platform to be able to do that thank you yep. <laughs>